Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Wednesday Night Edition. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Me and my main man, the Transformer. We're going to set it off for you all for midweek tonight. Give you all a break from all this crazy politics and stuff that's going on. And uh, we're just going to talk sports, man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, hey, look, we told we told everybody to go out and vote, right? And everybody did that. So, uh, you know, we got what we got. And uh, best of luck going forward. Anyway, um, <laughs> Transformer, what's good with you, bro? Man, chilling, brother. Feeling feel good. That. No Gino tonight, Edward. What's going on, brother? <clears throat> how you been, bro? You been all right? Maintaining, man. Maintaining. You know how I do. Always, man. Sit back, relax, and listen up, all right? That's it, man. That's 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 how we that's how we do it here. That's how we do it here. <laughs> this is how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we got some good topics for you all tonight, man. Um, we're gonna obviously it's Wednesday, so we're gonna do the pick'em. So you guys are ready for the uh NFL week, which commences tomorrow night with a pretty good one, I must say. And uh then we'll go, we'll uh briefly talk about the uh NFL trade deadline. Um, I don't think anything too crazy happened there, but we saw a couple teams make some moves that might uh, help them out in the long run. And then, of course, um, the big one, I, I was really interested to do this topic. Can Larry Bird play today? I think that's going to be pretty cool. And then we'll talk about the initial college football playoff rankings because, man, college football is freaking awesome. So um, we'll get there. Uh, yeah. But before we get to all of that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember. Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't. I know what everybody wants to talk I know about. They want to talk for. about Mr. Bird, the greatest That's white man ever touched a basketball. That's right. They're waiting for Mr. Bird. So what I will white say Jesus. about that is, uh, you know what, though? If he won more, wouldn't there be an argument for your guy, Jerry West, though, as, as the greatest white man to touch a basketball? He's He's got to be really up there, man. He was great yeah. defensively, offensively. I mean, Correct. he just can't get over that hump, man. And, and yeah, again, we have to hold that against that. guys, but yeah. he was great. Uh, yeah, Pistol Pete, back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, man, just like that. Yes, yeah, that's tough, man. That's tough. Like, granted, I wasn't alive, so I can't speak on things I was yeah, alive well, for. From what we know, what we saw, history, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, looking at your history, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was he was retired before I was born, on it, so yeah. But yeah, um, <laughs> may he rest okay. in peace. By the way, may he rest. That's right. I forgot. Uh, Mr. Yeah. West passed away. That's right. Yeah. Uh, full basketball life. All right, let's do this. We will get to it right now. And this is our main topic of the night. Make sure I know y'all been waiting for this, so we're gonna get to it right now. Make sure y'all hitting the share button. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please helps a lot. So let's Sit go ahead back, and uh, relax. Let's look at some people listen in. up. Listen up. All right. Um, you wanna you wanna rock with this man? It's your team. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why you <giving> <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to mess with you, man. I just wanted to mess with like, you. Wait, what? Damn. I don't have the nerve. I'm not talking about the Green Goblin over there, man. That's your team. Damn, right? why you got to be a goblin, though, man? What is that? That's it's green. A, it green. That was green a, goblin. It kind of went together. So, yeah. That was really uncalled for, man. I'm, green that was goblin? Hurtful. Bro, you, oh, you're not into Marvel like that. I I know who the Green Goblin is, man. So, you get it? He's, he's you know, white superhero. I mean, it's like, you know, villain. <laughs> Where's Green? Hey man, Bird wasn't a villain, man. That's why. Why are we doing that? You must don't. You must forgot. You know, <laughs> was he the damn villain? Yes, he was a villain. No, I don't think Bird was a villain. He was just a. He was just a. He was our guy. villain. Okay? Oh yes, he was. Oh yes, he was a villain. Yeah, too. Okay, he was okay. our villain. <laughs> all right, all right. I get it. I get it. We had um, the superhero in Magic Johnson. Okay, big smiles, always happy. Right. Winning five of them things, you know what I'm saying? Okay, my bad, bro. Go ahead, open up the segment. <laughs> yeah. 
No doubt, no doubt. All right, all right, guys. So here's the deal. Here's the deal, right? I was listening to, um, I, well, I was doing my um, my, no- <laughs> my normal YouTube thing, and I was uh, kind of scrolling and looking at, uh, you know, looking at my different content and whatnot, and getting ideas and just uh, enjoying what people had to say um, about different topics. And what I will say is, uh, this this to me was really interesting in that. Um, it was uh, Iman Shumpert's new podcast, um, and he had Baron Davis on there. Baron Davis, obviously, really good basketball player in his time, really good, like one of the first truly elite, super freaking, uh, super freaking athletic point guards. Right? You remember Baron Davis, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can absolutely. Remember that dunk he put on uh, Utah Jazz. He played. Oh my field. god, on Kirilenko! Oh yeah, my he goodness! Took the jersey out and yeah, had his, they said he Ooh. had a. Uh, they said he had a Terrible. waist trainer on. Oh, damn. Okay. All I know is he piped on Carolina. That joint was oh. so terrible. It was oh, bad. It was yeah, it was bad. real bad. I saw that. <laughs> I was watching that game live. I'm like, yo. Because mm-hmm. I think they were an eighth seed that year. Or what are they, the seventh seed? Uh, the eighth or the seventh seed. It was an was that the We Believe Warriors? Yeah. Yeah, Mon- Monty AC. Ellis. Uh, Steve, Steven Jackson, Steven Jackson, uh, uh, Matt Barnes, and them, Matt AC. Barnes, yeah, 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 AC, yeah, yeah, that was AC, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, Utah beat, was uh, they one. beat the Mavs, but um, I thought it was it was Utah, bro. <laughs> no, they beat the Mavs in the first round, <laughs> Steve, you wild, you wild. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Seriously. All right. Let's let's get it, y'all. Let's get let's let's get to the top. Okay. So so Larry Bird, man, um, widely <laughs> widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time, and I think that um, greatest players of all time, who is also an incredible shooter. I don't I don't uh, refer to Larry Bird as a shooter. Now, that said, I think he's uh thirty nine percent from three for his career. Um, I want to say about just about fifty percent from the floor and uh 88% from the free throw line and we know that he's in terms of clutch baskets game winners from all over the floor all time big time shots he's been that pretty much his whole career so everybody knows what type of player Larry Bird was well maybe a lot of people don't know but Larry Bird was one of the best to ever do it in all facets okay he played on the greatest front court of all time Larry Bird Kevin McHale Robert Parrish on those uh, great 80 Celtics championship teams, won three championships, quick rundown on Larry Bird. Greatest players of all time. My bad, y'all. So, um, I I done, yeah, I previously done a show about Larry Bird, um, <laughs> giving him his flowers. So I just figured I would uh, use that and reiterate. But Larry Bird, um, just uh, just a super, a super awesome player. Um, he could pass the ball. He was like, well, I guess maybe you say Pistol Pete, but he was the original kind of point forward that ushered in a lot of what we see LeBron and Tatum and um, Paul, Paul George and these guys doing today. Right. Remember we talked about that last time we were talking about the point forwards, um, Anthony Mason and and, and Jalen Rose and all those guys. So um, he was, uh, (laughs) come on, Miss Gale, Um, last to win three MVPs three years in a row. Answer is Larry Bird. Uh, Was at uh, 84, 85, 83, 83, 84, 85. Yeah, 84, 85, 86, all three, and two two years out of those, he won championships. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, Larry Bird was was that dude, and it's funny because people always talk about how unathletic he was, and obviously no one's saying he was Dominique Wilkins, but he had, I'd say, moderate athleticism until the back. Oh, okay, until the back got injured, and until he had the foot injuries. But um, you got to give Larry Bird his credit because what I love about him, this is a guy who consistently dominated his opposition they would constantly put the best opposing defender on him and he would still work him out there's all the stories out there of bird telling you what he's going to do to you and then doing it on the very next play like i'm going to get it right here i'm going to take a jab step (laughs) two dribbles i'm gonna pull up and i'm gonna drain it in your effing face and (laughs) it was wild like the stuff he would say to you um there was a there was a game i think it was in la a, a christmas game and magic was hurt and uh, Magic was on the uh, on the bench during warmups, and Bird came by and said, "Hey, how you doing, Magic? You know, he says, uh, uh, you 'You not playing tonight? Don't worry, sit back. I'll put on a show for you. I think he had like a thirty nine point triple double or something <laughs> like that. You know? So Bird was Bird was insane, right? There was uh, one clip I cannot remember who the defender was, 
but he bird turns to him and says to him before the game says get ready i'm fixing to work your fucking ass out <laughs> just like that pardon the language y'all y'all know i'm not a profane dude but i mean and that's that's the type of stuff that bird is doing so anyway iman shumpert has podcast baron baron davis is on there and um somehow the topic comes up about what uh if if larry bird could play today and iman shumpert is trying to say that bird couldn't play today and baron davis is like nah man bird what? would bird would kill today yeah 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 absolutely um young disciple what's good what's good no bird is the best small forward in history not the second best but anyway that's a different thing so anyway um oh miss gail that was michael cooper he said that too okay there you go because you would always see um michael cooper would get that assignment with la andrew tony in philly they called him the boston strangler because that was his whole thing was defense and so um yeah you, you would see bird just consistently you know uh giving guys the business um in terms of on the basketball court and the talking and the just the ability to back it up and make the clutch shots and um so i was a little off in that snippet i played he actually was uh uh, Bird is 24 and a half points per game. And that would have been higher if he didn't have the injuries at the end of his career. 10 rebounds a game and 6.3 assists per game. So what I love is that he was such an elite passer, even though he wasn't a guy that had the ball a whole lot because he played with a Hall of Fame point guard on that team in Dennis Johnson. And he was an elite rebounder, even though he was not super athletic. And he played on a front court that had other dominant bigs, right? And yep. so... The fact that he was able to do what he was able to do also in a much more physical league, again, that always stands out to me. But Transformer, I could go all night waxing poetic about Bird, man. Um, what, what were your thoughts about him? Obviously, you're a Laker guy and we respect that and we respect what Magic and Bird did for the league. And I love that rivalry. But tell me when you think about Bird, where are you? And then your thoughts about whether or not he could play today. I mean, I think it goes without saying. He is the greatest white man to ever be blessed to touch a freaking basketball. And I say mm -hmm. that with uh, like no racism or nothing like that, but that's right, right, right. what he is. The mm -hmm. pinnacle <laughs> guy, like, cause you know, back in the eighties and you know, uh, as we're, you know, the African-American community started coming up and being allowed and being more involved in the sports and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You always thought athleticism, dunking the basketball, highlight plays and stuff like that. And then came this guy named Larry, right? Scary Larry, who will walk in your locker room at a three point I'm shootout, legend. like, "Hey, yeah. which one of y'all want to come in? Gonna come in second, like, right? Hey, but well, who is he talking to? He's mm -hmm. talking to y'all who comes in a game and be like, "Hey, man, you know, I got to play the Lakers next week, uh, next game, so I'm gonna not use my right. I'm gonna use my left hand tonight to save my right hand for the Lakers." Crazy, right? <laughs> Drop thirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's left with his off hand, like. Mm -hmm. You don't get more like just shit talking, just yeah. and, and back it up like that, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like before the games even starting, before the shootouts are even starting, he's literally telling you what he's gonna do and he's gonna mm -hmm. go out there and do it, man. And I mean, get, granted, he's a Boston Celtic, but probably you know play. I mean, he he definitely played for one of the uh, uh, better teams and put him in the best position possible um, mm -hmm. to showcase his talent. But the kid, I mean. The the comp the comment here is could Bird play today? He can right. play. He can play today. He can right. play yesterday. He right. can play tomorrow. He can play next week. He can play next year. Once uh the, the president is at number forty eight, he can play then. He can <laughs> right, play the right. president's at fifty five. He can right. play if we travel to Mars. Man mm -hmm. can play on Jupiter. The man can freaking play because his skill set was something mm -hmm. that relates in every era. Right, the man can shoot the lights out of the basketball. He can pass mm -hmm. the basketball. Mm -hmm. If you go back and you just go back and look at highlights of Larry Bird at the rim. That's right. Like <laughs> Larry Bird can finish That's at right. the rim. Yeah. Granted, he as lanky and as all, like bad body shape mm -hmm. and like that can be on a basketball court. Right. The man was out there just wheeling yeah. and dealing at the rim. Yeah. That's right? right. On fast breaks, like you know, like throwing full hockey passes, uh hockey assists on fast breaks, getting down on the block, dunking, right. The man could he could do all that, bro. Like mm -hmm. Larry Bird, like I said, that I only respect one Celtic in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Dow Hall Laker fan. I literally right. take it to the core that I don't like Boston at all. Right. We know what Larry, it is. We respect that. Same Larry thing. Bird, yeah. Larry Bird gets all of my respect. Mm -hmm. When he's same talking, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm the same listening. way with Magic. You already yeah. know. <laughs> right. So that he's yeah. just that damn good, brother. He, he yeah, he's yeah, yeah. that damn good. Yeah, no, I, it, and it's crazy because um, 
you know, again, you, you hear all, all the stories like uh, like him telling, I think it was uh, Frank Layden. I think that's who it was, a uh, Utah Jazz head coach. Yeah. He's yelling at him, hey, get somebody out here to guard me. There's nobody guarding me. <laughs> and, you know, he's cooking him up. And, yeah, and he did the around. same thing. Yeah, he did the yeah. same thing with Chuck Daly. You know, like, are you going to get somebody out here to guard me? You know, screaming at coaches, get this white guy off me. He's disrespecting my game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like Bird was that crazy. So the, the, the question now becomes, um, could Larry Bird play today, right? And you have some yeah. people who are going to go to the old tired trope of, how much better today's players you, are and how they're so much more athletic and this, that, and the third. And um, yeah. So, you know, you, you got all that going on and I'm like, has anybody seen a guy named Luca? <laughs> right. Luca's not athletic. At Luca's all. not right. He's not like he's out here killing. Larry he's out here is athletic killing. compared to Luca. Correct. Larry is athletic right. compared to Luca. Luca exactly. Doncic is not athletic at right. all. And Luca right. Doncic is out here <laughs> killing the modern NBA. So if he could, why couldn't Bird? This is what I don't understand. And and I'm not talking about obviously end of the end of the line. Bird, bad back, bad feet. No, we're talking about um, we're talking about uh, um, prime Larry Bird. That we'll just take that three mid, years. Mid-80s. We'll say mid back. mid eighties. Right, that back Larry to Bird. back to back, like MVP level bird who was just out of this freaking world, right? I mean, it, man, I, I don't even know what to say. But to say that he couldn't play today, matter of fact, I actually had this argument with my uncle. He he told me he didn't believe that Larry Bird could play today, and if he did, he wouldn't get off the bench. And I'm like, how ridiculous is that? He he dominated in a league where it was physical, where you could hit guys, where you could hand check them, you could forearm check them, all that. And now to come into a league where everything is wide open, spread out, and and you can't get physical with him, I, he would kill. I think he could such easily an, average 35 today. I really do. That's such an asinine comment. When he I agree. was 6'9 with a heater. Mm -hmm. Now, damn the physical part of it right at this point. You know what I mean? Like, the mm -hmm. man was 6'9 with a heater. Yes. Man can shoot from any spot on the floor. Mm -hmm. That won't translate to an NBA where it's predominantly perimeter shooting. Exactly. Like, come exactly. on, man. I, I, I'm with you with your wrong. I mean, I'm not with you with your wrong, but I'm with you with your right. Come on now. Yeah, like, that's the right. man is six foot nine mm -hmm. and has a heater. He's a career 38% three point shooter. That's right. That's career. Right. Mm -hmm. And that won't, man, yeah. dude, come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Name that's me right. some. What other you know, he, he player in the league? He had what four, four, se five seasons over. Uh, let's see, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six seasons over forty percent. So imagine today when he's getting all these wide open looks, he would be killing and talking to you. And and that's Come the on, other man. problem. So many of these dudes today are mentally soft. He would break all these young cats out here, man. He would Bro, break them. The man won a three point shootout in a starter jacket. <laughs> hey, right. Didn't Come even on, take bro. off the warm up jacket. <laughs> right, right, right. Take off the star yeah. jacket. Bro. So now imagine he imagine he plays about? in a league where he's really focusing on shooting the three, right? You know, that that's the crazy part. And again, he could get away with not being an elite defender because again, I will point to Luca and most yeah. of the dudes in the modern NBA who don't defend. And at least Larry, he's he's not gonna lock guys up, but at least he attempted to play defense. And he was a very good help defender. I think he made a couple of um uh defensive second teams i know he made uh, at least one um uh, but the point is uh, let uh let's see. see i know he's got three time all yeah. defense there you go right yep. and th those are all second team but the point is yep. you know he he um he actually attempted to defend he gave the effort on that end and again a lot of guys today do not and so i look at it and i say man th this is absolutely crazy like i think the comparison was kevin durant like what would he do with kevin durant now he would have a lot of trouble with Kevin Durant. So that's Everybody when you offer help and you scheme that up. Uh yep, yep, you're right, Miss Miss Gail. Um, he was the he was the father of 50, 40, 90. Um, he definitely was. And in that era, I think uh Mark Price got a couple of those as well. So um, yeah, but no, he his his efficiency was off the charts, right? He was able to do that. But um, yeah, so the argument was, well, what would he do with a Kevin Durant today? Well, nobody's saying that. Um He's locking up Kevin Durant, but I guarantee you Kevin Durant would have a hell of a time with him too. They called Larry Bird the master of the half inch because they said he only needed a half inch to get his shot off. Like he was the original step back guy, step back um, uh, jump shot. And he wasn't stepping back and then, you know, skipping four or five more steps, this crap that we see these dudes do today. He was like legitimate jab, step, step back, hit the shot, you know? And so, no, uh, what's up, John Cunningham? Appreciate you coming in. Hit that like and subscribe. 
um, and hit the share button as well if you're enjoying the content. And no, we, we can't forget Pistol Pete. I did mention him earlier uh, towards the beginning of this segment. He was amazing. Is uh, Pistol Pete, I think maybe there was just something missing because for all of his skill and ability, it didn't turn to winning. So that was kind of that was kind of that was kind of iffy. Um, young disciple, man. We're not even talking about LeBron, man. What's up? You, this is I what, mean, because I, I, I it, in fairness, we were talking about KD. Uh -huh. Small forward. I, I, there, there is but, a little leeway to kind of bring Brian uh -huh, LeBron in. Uh -huh. there. But so, so what I'll say is, what would he do yeah. with Prime LeBron? He could not defend Shoot over him, LeBron, but I think he would he would work him out, and he would Shoot talk over. to him, and LeBron would get mad and start complaining to the ref and all this crap. But now nah, he 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 would work LeBron out, but he couldn't defend him. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that LeBron, nah, you know, nah. big, strong, fast. He's you know, running he, right over Larry Bird. Right? I mean, yeah, he, saw he what definitely would. Irving did the Bird. That's right. That's right. So I mean, yeah, he he would do that, but he. <laughs> Yo, so you you know why that happened, right? <laughs> You know why that happened, right? Bird was cooking. He got cooking tired of, cooking. He got tired yeah, of getting cooked. Him and talking to him the whole time. He got tired of being cooked. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was the same game, but there was one time Philly was playing Boston, and Bird was every time he scored, he was counting down backwards because I think he wanted to have like forty something. So he was counting down backwards every time he scored, and Dr. J like freaking lost it. I don't know if it was that instance or if that, but but the point is like Bird, because you know Bird is cooking you and he's talking to you oh, and I'm talking mad. Yeah, that that'll that'll break a lot of people. You know, like this country white dude out of nowhere, he's out here doing it. But I think when you go up against that guy, you got to be prepared and just know, look, just lock in and play. Don't listen to him. Easier said than done, of course, right? But <laughs> don't listen to him. Don't let him get inside your head. Lock in and play. That's all you can do. Because if you let this guy's talking get to you, oh, it's you're over. Blue. Right. Once you, and when he broke you here, oh, he about yeah. to break you from everything, waist the head down. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. He's, he's a killer. Out, bro. Like, he is like said, a man, killer. The, the, man, the man can play in any era. He's one Absolutely. of those type of players, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. He's played in what we call the roughneck era, the 80s. Mm -hmm. The nineties, where you know mm -hmm. hand checking was still involved, like yeah, yeah. and you couldn't do nothing with him then. He's right. six nine with a right. heater. Yes, in a league that is more open and we shoot more. Jason Tatum takes like 10 threes a game. Mm -hmm. And he needs to and stop. He's anyway. nowhere near the shooter that Larry Bird was. <laughs> no, no. Right. I mean, so, like, if you if you look at the percentages, he's probably um equal or better three point um shooter by percentage than than Bird. For his oh, career, I, I highly but, doubt it. Yeah, yeah, check that out. Bird is uh, thirty-seven point six from three for his career. I don't think but again, is near that. we 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 are in an era where guys shoot so many more of them. So of course the percentage is going to be there. But um... <laughs> yeah, he's thirty-five percent this year alone. I think he takes. Oh, I think he takes a lot of points. Okay, we're, there you go. So he's so he's right there. He's right there with Bird for his career. But nobody is going to look at Tatum and say that. Tatum is the, the caliber of shooter that Bird is. Nobody's going to say that. Negative. Despite the amount of shooting that he does. And, you know, his respect, too, but um, it's, it's just a different dude. So you hear this constant, could Bird play today? And you have so many people saying that, oh, Bird couldn't. I mean, in my estimation, Bird is arguably a Mount Rushmore player, period. You, you know, you could, some people say no, I say yes. Um, but Bird is clearly, I think, I think he's without question a top 10 guy. Um, where you have him in that top ten? That's you know that's very subjective. But I think oh, without yeah, I was a question. Top 10 guy, go ahead. Do you do you have him in your top ten transformer? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I think when the last time I did a top ten, I think I had mm -hmm. him in the top fifteen. I don't think I had okay. him in the top ten. Okay. Yeah, I got to go back and look at it. Mm -hmm. But off the top of my head, right now, I don't think I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I mean you you just let's see, Jordan had ruled to his players, no one was to say anything. Yeah, 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 I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did hear that. Like you don't talk to that guy. Like it's it's and that, that's funny because that was kind of the same rule that a lot of people had to Jordan, right? On on opposing teams, like don't yeah. talk to that guy. You do not want to rattle that cage, you know what I'm saying? And and that was the respect that that dudes had. But yeah, I I just thought it was so interesting though that um uh you had a guy like Iman Shumpert say that, you know, Bird couldn't play today and he'd be able to guard him. And I'm like, what? 
that dude guarded. He 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 cooked up way better defenders than you, Shump. And that's no disrespect, but that dude is all time. Like all six time five, six six. No, Shump is about six eight, I think. Is he? Oh damn. Man. Yeah, he's a really good defender, but he he he's not dealing with he's not dealing with Larry Legend. No way. No Larry way. Shooting over him. Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. Like, it, it's been. It was years, uh, over a decade. Wait, how long Larry Bird played? Like 13 years? 13, 13 years? years, yeah. Okay, yeah, 13 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. There was nobody that can check him in, right? Right. And there's nobody that can check him now. Like, that, I mean, you, like, the, like I said, when you have a skill set like that, that's just so mm -hmm. raw, um, you know, and it, and it's like, it's smart. Like, it wasn't not, like he wasn't out here dancing around with the basketball, no. nothing right. like that. It was just smart move, jab step, turn around, post fade, turn, jump like, Man could do everything on the floor mm -hmm. with the basketball when it came mm -hmm. to shooting, bro. You're not stopping. Y'all can't even stop, you know, KD and stuff like that. What the hell? All <laughs> right, I right. don't have to do nothing with uh, Larry, especially nah, on no fast break. As many fast nah. breakers they run these days, Clay right. Thompson would literally stop half court and shoot it. Right. <laughs> right. What the hell you think Larry finna do? <laughs> Larry yeah, on a fast just, break? Oh, bitch. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. The boy already running up the court like like Steph Curry. I'm like I'm running up the court. But I know that's great. right, right. But but again, man, I mean, I got to take his warm up suit off. Like you know, yeah, man, no man, doubt. Take your warm up joint off, man. Yeah, it, it's just frustrating to me for those who say that Bird couldn't play today and this that. And I'm like, so then how do y'all account for Luca? And 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 um, Luca is. I'm not saying he's on Bird's level because he's not. He's really good, but he's not on Bird's level. But like, how do you account for that? Luca destroying this league, but then at the same time turning around and saying Bird can play today. That just doesn't add up. Makes sense. Nah, that don't make sense at all. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm a logic dude, man, but that that doesn't add up. Um so, you can't so tell the, me, like just in mm -hmm. just simple concept, mm -hmm. a six nine guy with a mm -hmm. heater can't play. Mm -hmm. Now if, in if, an if, era if where shooting is the most valued skill, is yes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't that, that doesn't make sense, bro. Because we can't mm -hmm. go out and be like, "Oh man, well, could nobody shoot back then?" You know, I mean, because we we say this about Jordan. Jordan couldn't shoot the three. Well, they wasn't shooting the three back then. Larry mm -hmm. was, right? But Larry was casting right. joints from three, right? Yeah. So in a I mean, league to where it's predominantly threes, like these folks, mm -hmm. like teams average what? Third, I mean, 40, 50 threes a game. Attempts, now. yeah, 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 yeah attempts. Mm -hmm. So you think Larry ain't gonna cash in five, six threes a game? Boy, you said oh, no, he's gonna get those. Yeah, he's gonna get those. <laughs> and then he's cash. he's still gonna he's still gonna rebound. He's still gonna pass the ball like skill set elite. Skill set absolutely elite. He Correct. he Correct. was that guy, man. He was that guy. Um, I I definitely have him as our uh, best small forward ever. And that that's no shade on anybody else. That's that's what I see, having watched you know as many decades of this game as I have, and just again. To me, the simplest point is not having the physical tools that a lot of these other guys have and yeah. still killing them. Like, to me, that says something in a much more difficult era. That really says something to me. But, you know, that's uh, <laughs> that, that's how I see it. Um, yeah. So I know I, do, I know that uh, this topic was one people were waiting on. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open up the phone lines and you see the number rolling, scrolling on the bottom of your screen, 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. I'll also put it in the chat. And uh if anybody wants to call in. Type it right this time. And, um, last time. You was fucking that thing up. 8264. I got it. <laughs> 219 Appreciate you though. All right. So let's um I'll uh I'll take a couple calls on that. Uh we're not gonna turn this into a lengthy bird versus LeBron debate. We're not doing that. That's I think not the yet. question Please, is though. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna allow that to happen. The question is we're gonna um the question is whether or not Larry Bird could play today. And also, do we think that today Larry Bird gets his due for his greatness um, when we talk about basketball? I think probably not. You don't think he does? Depends on who you're talking to, but I don't think he does. I think that... As in yeah, no, that, that's correct. That's correct, Miss Gale. The three-point line did not start until his rookie year. That's correct. Um, 79, 80. Yeah, no, I, I don't think he does because, and, and we've talked about this before offline and on the show transformer that for whatever reason, the NBA, well, I know the reason, but the NBA does not give the past generations the respect due because if they do people are, what people are going to do is start looking back and be like, wait a minute. And they're going to realize all this marketing that they're doing for modern players are lies. All right, right. let's go ahead and take this call. 
Sid Bubba, what's good, bro? Sid Bubba. What's going on, Chip made it Transformer? What's going on, brother? <laughs> what's going on, Mr. Bubba? Much, How you doing? Much, man. man, I'm doing great. Even though I am a LeBron guy, me and okay. Nino, but uh, I respect that. I love Bird. Bird, my guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love him. Um, because he was really LeBron before LeBron. Mm-hmm. Handling Correct. the ball, Absolutely. passing the ball. Uh, rebounding the ball, defending the ball. Rebounding, and he was all he always thought about five or six steps ahead. Mm-hmm. And some of the plays that they'll throw, he'll throw behind his end, he'd be falling back. Uh, if it's a steal, mm-hmm. you don't see him anticipating the steal, he'll go in, he'll cut the lane. There was nothing he could do. That's so right. He's still in today's game. He don't have to be fast because he's smart. These young people don't got basketball IQ. No. Part of that, though, is they're not coached that way coming up, but right. I definitely hear what you're saying. Right. No. Uh, but he knows how to play. Oh, yeah. And, oh, he yeah. Knows, and, he, and he also knows how to get his team involved. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. So he, yeah. So, and I watched. Many a game mm-hmm. with the Celtics, the Celtics versus the Rockets. He was given a team them the business. 86 finals, right? 86 finals, yes, sir. That's right. That's he right. He was giving them the business. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're right. So, uh, and and I'll please. say this, you, you know, you're a watcher of this show, so you know, Dream is my guy. That is my favorite well, player of all time. Him. But, my dream. My, my life, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but no, um, Bird and the Celtics did. You know, did hand it to them in, in that finals, I think four games or two. But I'll say real quick, the other problem is, man, Dream and the Rockets really ruined what would have been maybe the best finals matchup of all time because those 86 Lakers were so loaded and so good. Oh, yeah. And oh, obviously, yeah. this 86 Celtics, 40 and one at home that year. And, uh, you know, just I, I think uh, what they oh. win 65, 66 games that year. So one of, oh, one yeah. of the best teams of all time. And, right. You know that was supposed to be, you know that was the that was the one. Like, and I, I, I think the Celtics would have won that. I, I I'm sure I'm biased, yeah, I, <laughs> but um, because yeah, been good. yeah so the the, the been Celtics good. the Celtics won in '84 against the Lakers. Lakers come back win in '85. So we're supposed to get that rubber match in '86, but the Lakers stumbled in the Western Conference Finals, yeah. and then yeah. we got it one more time in '87, and the Lakers went ahead and did the job there. You know, shout outs to Magic Johnson and those guys. Off on a high note, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, you right, Transformer. You right. Hey, you will never hear me talk bad about those Lakers. You will never hear me. I hate it, but you won't hear me talk about bad about them. But um, no, I mean, could you imagine if if the Lakers had got to that fight? Like, what a run that would have been from eighty four through eighty seven. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, before before Jordan, you know, it was Magic with me. I'm a Lakers mm-hmm, fan. I'm mm-hmm. old school. It was Magic and Kareem. Okay. So it was the Magic Man. You know, mm-hmm. always throwing those crazy passes. Yeah. Seven up commercials, everything. <laughs> so, uh, I, so I go back with the Lakers, and this was before Jordan. And and then um, my other thing was yes. I don't, and you know, Scotty, my homeboy. Oh, really? Yeah, Pippa, yeah, my homeboy. Man, listen, you need to give Pip a shout out, man. We got to get him on here, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, right now he's going to the game to see his boy play. Yeah, but yeah, Pip yeah. my homeboy, and I told him, I said, as good as y'all was, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if y'all would have beat that 86 Celtics team. Mm. I can't, woo. I said, Pip, it'll be tough. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. Well, yeah. you know, Pip, Pippen is going to say, nah, we, we, we're not losing that because. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, in fairness, he's going to say that because he, he's been there six times and never took an L. Right. So, you know, he's going to believe he like nobody player. was beating us. Yeah, he, he, I know he feel that way, but <laughs> that 82 Celtics team was so good. Yeah. I just can't. As good as Mike was, but mm-hmm. you have to account for the other guys with Larry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, but. Yeah, but getting back to the point, man, I, I really believe he would kill kill it these days because mm-hmm. you don't have to be that fast. Nope. You know, all you no. gotta do is get to your spot. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, 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 he'd get it. He'd get it. Yeah, I, I think I think he would dominate if he played today. Absolutely. And again, like like we talked about, um, and you mentioned it, and and Miss Gale in the chat mentioned it, and others. But his his basketball intelligence was, you know right there oh, with the with the best all time you know oh, yeah. um if, yeah, if you yeah. want to put lebron up there fine okay 
But I mean, Bird is right there with him, uh, Magic and, and Mike and Isaiah right. and those guys. So, um, yeah, just like you said, thinking the game five steps ahead and really uh, yeah. being able to yeah. play on that level, man. And that's, right. you know, and then, of and course, the, the actual skill set, being able to play the post, feel, mid range, yeah. three ball. Oh, you know? yeah. Correct. Yeah, so he, he, it was nothing he could do. And Ms. Kell did highlight, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. as the first person before KD, before Steph, is the 50, 40, 90 guy. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so uh, yeah, he, yeah he, he's a bad man. I agree. I agree. I, I yeah. think I think he would cook the modern NBA. <laughs> and I, I, I keep saying it, you know, just because if, if Luka can do it and Bird is better than Luka, I, I think by a bit, yeah. then, then Bird than would. Luka. Yes, and, and bigger, bigger than right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lucas six and seven, bigger. Bird six nine, right? Legit six nine. Yep, mm-hmm. yep he's six nine. So that's right. Yeah. And yeah. But I wanted to, I wanted to throw in a fun fact. Uh, yes, we was asking, uh, was Larry Bird on any defensive teams? He actually was tied for third in defensive player of the year before. I didn't know that until now. I didn't know that either. He was tied for third. Uh, Sidney Moncrief won it that year. Trey mm-hmm. Wallace was second. Larry mm-hmm. Bird was tied with Maurice Cheeks, Michael Cooper, mm-hmm. and Bobby Jones. For third and defense player of the year, they all got that's crazy because those are some all time great defenders. There. Yeah, wow, right, but that's dope. Even though Bird wasn't athletic, he knew how to play. He exactly. knew which, back, back to basketball, like you, mm-hmm. he knew which spot the defender gonna be at, he knew how to anticipate the lanes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I can, I had, I had, as a you know, as, as a old school Laker fan with my, with my <laughs> shit mate. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I hated the Celtics too. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I that's all. That, hey, but but you know, that's the you know only man I give love to over there. The only one. No, that's right. But I tell you, Sid Bubba, in all seriousness, like I hate the Lakers, but I hate the Lakers because I love the Celtics, not because yeah. I, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Right. That that's why. Right. Me and Transformer, yeah. we talk about it all the time. My respect yeah. for that organization. <laughs> And for Kobe yeah. and Magic and Kareem yeah. and the rest of those guys is yeah. is way higher than it should be for a Celtics fan, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> the, those guys, those guys, man, their greatness right. is just—it was so beautiful to watch, and it was so yeah. good for the game. And just you know, looking back, um, uh, I don't know if you read the book when the game was ours. I'm digressing a little bit by Jackie McMullen. Okay. She she covered right, the Celtics right, right. as a writer for a while with the Boston Globe. Uh-huh. And she wrote okay. this book about, you know, Magic and Bird. It's called When the Game Was Ours. And it's just, right, right. it's beautiful, man. Take you back to a, a wonderful time in, in the NBA right. and just, you know, and those two guys. Yeah. And then, too, rivals were rivals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, right. When the Celtics lost to Detroit, Detroit had to earn it. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was nothing given. That's Every right. Every game was, it was a dog fight. Mm-hmm. Every game was a dog fight. Yeah. Right yeah. That's right. And and remember, Detroit, I think, got beat by the Celtics in, uh, I think, 86 and 87 before they beat them yep. in 88. And so that's right. why when when people talk about, oh, you know, Jordan and not to let this devolve into the way it's going. But real You're quick, about to. people You're talk about, about Jordan didn't listening. beat Bird until, uh, <laughs> you know, Jordan never beat Bird and Jordan didn't win a championship till, you know, seven years in. I'm like, back then there was a pecking order. You had to. Right. You had, had to, to go through right. the process. And so I think yeah. a lot of people don't understand that. Um, Derek Osbury says, sounds like your love of the game trumps your love of the Celtics, and that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I say that because I don't love the game like that anymore because of what the game has become. There was a time I did, but yeah. it's – it's not like that now, but yeah, Derek. I mean, yeah, it was it was such a beautiful thing back then, you know. So yeah, well, you know, it was about real competition. Yeah, but now it's more or less uh, branding and yes. Uh, yes. everybody everything. got their own shoe. Yeah, everybody got their own shoe. So and then the guy can't say nothing. He, you know, he's worried about what somebody say. He's mm-hmm. worried about what somebody do. You, you don't want to. Yeah, instead of guy, that's just point. You know, just being able to play and go mm-hmm. at it. But you know what? That's another good point, though. If Bird played today, him having the personality he has, I don't think he would give two squirts a monkey piss about freaking about branding or or social media or none of that. He wouldn't care. He just want to go get his work in, come out, hoop, give somebody the business and go home, you know, kind of kind of like kind of like how Jokic is. Country. What's that? 
Say go right back to them country fields in uh, mm-hmm. Spring Valley. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Facts. Hey, hey, you got hey, us country fellas, boy. Hey, ain't nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, playing up from sun up to sundown. Yeah, running, man. Uh, running yeah. up and down. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, but you got anything else, said Bubba? No, that's the that's a big shout out to my boy Nino and. Uh, that Steve Splendor, my boy Steve. <laughs> Steve is my guy. <laughs> Steve is my guy. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah but don't have to get into it about KD and LeBron. But uh, other than that, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, if there was anybody else, I wouldn't have a problem. But it just can't be KD. It just can't be KD. <laughs> KD can't, if he don't got more titles than this man, mm-hmm. and he only won with Golden State, mm-hmm. he only won with Golden State. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like KD. Mm. I love him, but he he got to win without. He he, he seriously got to win one without Golden State. Um, I got, if we do that, then I say okay. He got to win one without Golden State. Yes, yes, I I agree. Oh God! All right, man, said Bubba. That man, he lo- he lost it to the TV again. My bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, but but um, but if you notice, I'm also not falling into the trap though. I'm not doing it. No, and I'm I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm, and I'm telling you, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brothers. Uh, All right, Sid, man. Have I'll a good night. Guy Nino out there. No doubt. All right, All see right. you, Bubba. All right, man. Appreciate the call as always. All right. All right, brother. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good call by Sid Bubba. Yeah, man. The, the I think the basketball IQ is really a separator, man. Really a separator. And right. in an era where... Uh, Unfortunately, it seems like the basketball is so much more simple. I I think that would make him a killer today. But yeah, you know, true. what would um, be what would be your favorite Larry Bird moment? Okay, I got that one. That's an easy one for me. Um, it's actually an entire game, and I was in I was a freshman in high school, in 1992, and I was going to Bishop McNamara High School. Shout out Bishop McNamara Catholic School in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Right. So, um. Every, you know, we I wear a shirt and tie and slacks and all that, right? So every Sunday, my mom would tell me, hey, I don't want you to have to worry about it in the morning. Press all your clothes for the week now, right? So I would, I'm in my room and I'm staying. This is April 1992, Sunday afternoon, NBA on NBC. I'm pressing all my clothes for the week and I'm watching the Celtics versus the Trailblazers. And this is an old Larry Bird now, right? Final year in the league. And you know how Shannon Sharp talks about when you get old in the game, every now and then you can still summons up a great one. You can't do it every night like you could when you were young, but every now and again, you can summon up one great one, right? And so this is actually Larry Bird's final career triple-double. I think he's got 60, if I'm not mistaken. Final career triple-double, and I believe he had 49, 14 rebounds and 12 assists in double overtime to lead the Celtics to a win against the Blazers. And I don't remember the exact date, but this was April 1992. I remember this distinctly because I'm pressing my clothes and I'm, you know, and I'm just blown away and I'm so amazed. And I'm like, I'm just like, wow, Who's he wow. Playing against? And the Portland Trailblazers. And matter of fact, this is the year that um, the Trailblazers would come out of the West and go play Michael Jordan and the Bulls in the finals. So the Blazers were really, really good. But yeah, Bird at 49, 14, and 12 that afternoon, that Sunday afternoon in the Boston Garden. And this is the old Boston Garden because they hadn't rebuilt it yet. Um, so yeah, that's that's my favorite Bird moment. It stands out to me like it, it's just one of those things. I remember what I was doing. I remember when it happened. And uh, yeah, it was it was incredible. It was March 15th, you mean? March was it 15th? March 15th? March 15th, okay. 1992. There you, go. you got the numbers exactly right. 49 mm-hmm. points. 14 rebounds, 12 mm-hmm. assists, and 54 there minutes. They went into overtime. Yo, overtime. Okay, I thought it was double. Why did I think it was double? But anyway, yeah. So, but that game. It was double. I believe, oh, my bad. It was double. It was double. Okay, well, I knew it, it was double. It was double. <laughs> but, but I believe that's his final career triple-double. And, you know, by then he was a, a I'm not going to say a shell of his former self, but he was not that guy anymore. He had bad feet. He had a bad back. And still, he was able to summons up one more, you know, and uh, yeah, lead his team to victory. Work. So, huh? Gave him that work. That's Gave nasty him that work. work. <laughs> 49, that 14, work. and 12 is work. That's work. Like, you, you got know? a good boy. You get a paycheck. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that was, that's my, that's my favorite Larry Bird moment. It, and you would, you would think it might be, you know, um, 1987 in the Boston garden. I want to say uh game at the end of game five, the steal that he gets from um, uh, that he gets on Isaiah Thomas. And then he finds the cutting Dennis Johnson for, for the game winning layup. Yeah. Um, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm laughing at, bro. <laughs> Rock'em, he sure did sit bubble rock em, sock em robots. He sure did. Oh man, did. but see that that's because Bird Bird was cooking him up so bad he lost his mind. <laughs> but um, but no, that was uh yeah, you would think it would be that that and that interception that Bird got. And um and and I'll tell you real quick, to me, the most amazing thing wasn't that he just got that steal, it's that he got the steal and somehow instinctively knew. I guess they drilled this. As soon as he got the steal, Dennis Johnson immediately made the cut straight to the rim and Bird, like almost falling out of bounds, hits him with the dime. Zoop! And DJ gets the, I think he got an and one on that. DJ gets the layup and that was, um, you know, that was to win the game. So that was an incredible moment as well. But yeah, that that whole game in, in 92, uh, March 15th. Okay, I got to put yeah. that in the memory bank. I don't know why I thought it was April, but. But you had the numbers exactly right, though. Yeah, 49 man. point, 14 rebounds. So yeah. You had the numbers right. Yeah. It was the date that was right. It was March 15th. Okay, cool. Thank at you. The Boston, Thank you for correcting me. Boston. Yep. Yep. Oh, I, yep. You, man. So, I wanted to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that, was, that was the one, though, man. That was That's my favorite all-time bird moment. And oddly enough, it wasn't a championship. It wasn't any of those moments. It was that one. I guess because I was really like old enough to really, really know Engaged, and, see yeah. it, and then to kind of know, I didn't know that that was the end for him, yeah. but I knew he was, you know, getting down to the end and to see him, you know, just uh, pull out another great one was incredible to me. So yeah, that was, that was it for me. Um, So real quick, before we move off this topic, man, what's your favorite magic moment? I know there are many. <laughs> I mean, because you got to think I, like for me, I have uh -huh. to do research on okay, uh, everything okay. magic because you got to think I was born in 1990. So mm -hmm. you know everything he's done was right. prior prior to okay. Uh, but you right, man. I got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I got a lot. So I mean, going back and looking at, uh, I think my most because I'm, I'm more of like the like the motivational guy. Like, what can mm -hmm. I take away from this? I think my my favorite moment was him in the Olympics, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Literally, yeah. kind of like that passing the torch to Jordan. Okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. hey, not, man, you're gonna have to run this, right? You yeah, like, like yeah. and getting the team involved, like making it competitive, like, mm -hmm. hey, bro, we brothers, but y'all gonna have to fight each other for this, like, right? Let, right. Let's come, let's come play the game. Like, hey man, hey, yeah. you ain't he ain't gonna talk to you like that. Hey, you better go and get him. <laughs> like, bro, yeah. press his head. Oh, Jordan just like you hey, hey, Carver, you better go do something to that point, mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. He's he on your ass today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like to me that that just stuck out the most. Um, uh, because like I said, that was just like a, a motivational tactic. Like he was being a team player and a mm -hmm. competitor at the same time mm -hmm. with, with guys that, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he knew Jordan was the next best, best thing smoking. He saw that coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, but, but he, you know what I love though, even though he was out of his prime, he was not just going to hand it to hand Jordan. It. A bird had to tell him, like, oh, magic, it's it's not us anymore. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> it's, it's, it's our time is done. Like, bird literally had to tell him, like, it's it's over, magic, you know. And 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 I love that, even though magic is always smiling and, and looking happy because you know, love of the game, but yeah. magic was a psycho competitor as well, you know, always trying to win. So he's like, man, no, nah, I ain't just gonna give it to him. Hell no, nah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's, he wants to come so, take this. yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. So I, I love that, but um. I'll tell you, I think probably the uh, magic yeah, moment that it. stands out to me yes. is when he came back to play in the uh when he came back to play in the all-star game after he had retired. Yeah. And uh I think he had 25 and he was the all-star game MVP of that last one. Uh that that's what that's what kind of stood out to me. Um obviously the countless amazing passes. And real real quick, I, I know I'm I'm just I'm hey. I'm just kind of taken back right now. Um, right now we're in a time no. box. I know, right? Um, <laughs> if you go back and you watch uh, NBA Superstars, um, you could probably find it on YouTube. I actually had the VHS back in the day, but NBA Superstars and each each player had a like a, a video. They had a song and a video. So I think her name is Patty Austin. She has a song, I Will Remember You. And ordinarily, I never would have listened to that song, but that was the song for Magic, I Will Remember You. And you know, they're showing him and he pushing the rock and making these passes. And the only part I hate was when he hit the junior sky hook in the lane in uh, 
hit the junior sky hook in the lane in 87 to win the championship in the Boston Garden. And uh, hmm, yeah, that doesn't feel very good even thinking about it now. But, <laughs> but no, um, that video actually made me really love that song. Maybe it's NBA superstars too. But the point is, um, I love that song. I will remember you by Patty Austin. Wonderful song. And I guess, yeah, I think it was NBA superstars too, because, Oh, there you go. It's not that serious. What's up, bro? Um, yeah. So that like, when I hear that song to this day, I cannot hear it and not see the magic Johnson video in my brain because I watched that tape so many times, you know? And so like, you can hear me going and you know how I feel about magic, man. I could talk about magic all day and all night. And it's just, no, absolutely. it's just wonderful, man. Man, yeah, great no basketball doubt. man, great times, man. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh different now. Anyway, if, if, uh, if I could if I could be a fan and I get in the time box, you know, that's definitely yeah. an era I would want to go back to, man. Mm -hmm, I mean, because mm -hmm. I mean, as a Lakers fan, you know, you know, Roy. I mean, but you you must know your history, right? You know, what I mean, you gotta know, you know, what mm -hmm. we did before the last right. six championships that we won, you know, mm -hmm. prior to Kobe and Shaq, right? So mm -hmm. to go back and like to just do your research and like that's where my respect for Larry grew because I had to watch magic. Like how mm -hmm, was magic mm -hmm. getting all these championships? Who was his right. main, who was his main rival? Like mm -hmm. it was bird. Right. And did you not only see that, 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 that relationship didn't start in the NBA. That's just started in right. college. Like it was, yeah. it was before they even got here. No folks mm -hmm. battling in the NCAA. That's right. right. That's then right. they get to the NBA and it just continues And you're on two of the biggest marquee franchises in the NBA and That's you right. still, and you still got to meet at that final, that final destination, which was the NBA Finals, and uh, it's just, it's just amazing, man. It's just amazing history to know um, something that, you know, I think, you know, guys like us, we must continue talking about it because if not, it's going to get lost, right? It's going to get yeah, lost. Yeah, I think in you're right. And, That's a great you know, point. Just like now, like Larry Bird, people saying he can't play in his what, what, what? Yeah, like that—that yeah. that doesn't even make sense. But that lets you know, like mm -hmm. you don't—you don't know your history. You haven't been mm -hmm. watching. You don't know what his style of play was like because mm -hmm. it could definitely translate into this league. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I think I mean, that's that's what you know. Podcasts like us are for, and that's what we're about. Yeah. You know, shining light on that history. You know, making people go back and do their research. You're like, damn, man, why are they talking about Larry Bird for a whole segment? This right, is why right. you're gonna find out. Yeah, buckle up, yeah. sit back, go, relax, go check it out, listen up. watch what this dude was get, doing. Get the popcorn ready because, uh, that's a fact, you know, that 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 mm -hmm. dude was a monster, man. Like I said, it's monster. only one Celtic fan I give love to. That's mm -hmm. that's that's Mr. Larry Legend, man. Appreciate that, no doubt, no doubt, absolutely. Um, but yeah, um, I guess we can we can let this topic go because, man, we could we could go on all night, you know, reliving those wonderful, uh, wonderful memories and all that, uh, correct. Skill or athleticism, choose one. I got bird all day. Yeah. Oh, skill, skill easily because there comes a time. What's up, Laro? There comes a time when the athleticism fades. And if you don't have skill, then you're stuck, you know? So, yeah. Unless definitely you're LeBron, skill. then you're an Iron Man for 22 years, but crazy, right? No, you, you know, you know who we're really going to see that drop off with heavy? Giannis. Yeah. That's the guy. We're going to see that drop off like over the cliff. Yeah. 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 Because the athleticism is out of this world, but uh, you know, no. Spirit. All right, um. <laughs> <laughs> none. God. No post hook, no post spin, no nothing. That yeah, man is yeah. just gonna outrun you and run through you to and get bang on you when he can. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um. Yes, he did, Miss Gale. He did win Rookie of the Year, no question about it. Miss and you know what? That's funny because when Magic saw that, that drove him to you know to to win the championship and do what he did so you know it it was beautiful man it's just perfect and uh the league forever owes those guys a debt and it's just a shame that that's not placed on a higher pedestal than it is so you know i mean that's considered like the other than uh you know will chamberlain bill russell you know mm -hmm. that's like the biggest rivalry that's right <laughs> like in nba history like that's right bird magic hell yeah mm -hmm. like yeah. they be like man what's the biggest rivalry bird magic no doubt you know no what doubt. I mean? You know, th th those two was neck and neck every mm -hmm. every year, every other year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, three championships, five championships. That's eight championships between two competitors, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The next best thing, what? I mean, in the modern NBA, you can only translate that to LeBron and Steph. LeBron and Steph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, LeBron got four. Steph but it got still four. doesn't even seem. But they it they only met up like four times. It still doesn't feel the same, though, you know? I mean, maybe that's just me. 
but no, it still no, doesn't no, no. Quite it doesn't, feel, it doesn't the same. feel the same. No, no, no. And and it is the best rivalry of the modern era. I agree, but it yeah. just doesn't. It, I don't. I don't know. Something is different. Because like you, like like uh, like we said before, they came in as competitors already. Mm. That's they right. they That's were right. they were before they even stepped foot in the NBA mm-hmm. arena of their prospective franchises. Mm-hmm. Them mm-hmm. folks was competitors already. That's right. You know what I mean? So yeah, Steph Curry, yeah. what he came came from Davidson. Mm-hmm. Bron came from Ohio way before mm-hmm. Steph Curry mm-hmm. was, you know, even in college. So That's right. you know, for them right. guys to meet up, they just so happened to meet up and created a rivalry. Yes. Them boys was rivals when they stepped into the league. Yeah. Then they just yeah. went to the two franchises. That are the it, biggest robbery in the somehow NBA. all lined up perfectly. <laughs> it was perfect, man. Was opposite perfect. coasts, opposite teams, rivals, you know, like you said, right. played in the NCAA championship game. Like yes. nobody could have asked for it to be more perfect than that. It lined Almost up. Almost like maybe perfectly. they set it up. <laughs> they set it up like that. Like ah, and, then, man, and, and, and like not only that, even even gets deeper. The personalities match where they went. That crazy, Mary right? Was country boy, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't want to be all in the cameras. Mm-hmm, oh, we'll mm-hmm. send you to Boston. Nobody wants right. to do that in Boston, right? Magic Hollywood, Hollywood, yes, it's showboating. Yes, you go to LA. Guess yes. what? You like cameras in your face. Perfect fit, perfect fit, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Man, stepped in the league and instantly won a championship. Like, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect fit, perfect fit.